This Parsha has been described by some as one of the most dramatic Parshiot in the entire Torah. It begins with the with Yehuda and Yosef, which the Zohar Kodesh refers to as Takrufta Malka Malka, the two kingdoms of Klal Yisrael coming to a showdown. A few pages later in the Parsha, we come to an equally awesome meeting whereby Yaakov Avinu meets his son Yosef HaTzadik. They've been separated for 22 years. Yosef HaTzadik left home when he was 17, a 17 year old boy. And the Torah tells us that when they meet, Vayera Elov, Yosef HaTzadik presented himself before Yaakov Avinu, Vayipoel al Tzavorov, and he fell upon his neck, Vayev al Tzavorov Oid. And Yosef HaTzadik cried a lot. What was Yaakov Avinu doing at this time? The Gemara says Yaakov Avinu did not fall upon Yosef HaTzadik's throat. He didn't kiss him. He was reading the Shema at this time. After not seeing his son, not just his son, but his closest son, and at this momentous occasion, this meeting, Yaakov Avinu is reading Kriya Shema, Yosef HaTzadik is crying. What's in it for us? We always emphasize that the Torah is not a history book, it's not a story book. Every single word, every single incident in the Torah has a message in it for us. It's teaching us. In order to understand this, and, and this is possibly one of the most important pieces of advice that the Torah gives to Klal Yisrael, to the Jewish nation, we need to take a look at a chapter in Likut Imran, chapter 36 in the first half of Likut Imran, and also a paragraph in Likut Halachos in Orachayim, Kriyashma, Halacha Dawid, paragraph Tesvov. The Torah tells us about Yaakov Avinu and his sons when they finally went to Egypt, Beshivim Nefesh, they went down as a unit of 70 soul, singular. The Gemara points out that by, when the Torah speaks about Esau's family, sheish nefoshois, six souls, plural. Corresponding to these 70 souls of the family of Yaakov Avinu, we have the 70 nations of the world. Each one of these nations is outstanding and unique in a particular midoro, a particular evil characteristic, something negative, something bad. One nation is outstanding in murder. Another one, adultery. Each one has a particular midoro that they are outstanding in. Rabbein Azal tells us the one that's a composite of all 70 of them is pigama bris the wrong type of behavior between men and women, in action, in thought, in speech. When Yaakov Avinu went down to Egypt with his children, this was the forerunner for ex many examples throughout the history until today when the Jewish nation would go into exile. When a Jew realizes that he's in exile, he's in Golis physically and spiritually, and he's experiencing te a test in this area, the way to overcome it is by reading Kriya Shema. Shema Yisrael Hashem Elokeinu Hashem Echod. And we know that when we recite the Kriya Shema, we cover our eyes with our hands. Rabbi Nezal explains that when a person does this, by reading the Shema and Baruch Shem Kivoyed Malchus Eliel Amvoyed, those 12 words, six words in the Shema, six words in Baruch Shem Kivoyed Malchus where we're declaring that we're accepting upon ourselves the kingdom of Hashem, by doing that, we're attaching ourselves to the 12 tribes, the 12 sons of Yaakov Avinu. Those 12 words correspond to these 12 tribes. And in those 12 words, we have exactly 49 letters corresponding to the 49 letters in the names of these 12 tribes. And by doing this, we attach ourselves to the 49 levels of holiness that the Jews accomplished from when they left Egypt 
leading up to Matan Torah and Har Sina, those 49 levels that they climbed at that time, each and every single one of us has to climb in order to be Zoycha, in order to achieve our revelation in Torah, our Matan Torah, any major elevation that a Jew wants to experience in Torah, in serving Hashem, they want to climb these 49 levels, they want to overcome the 49 levels of impurity of Egypt, the way we do it is by reciting the Shema and Baruch Shem Kavod Malchus which is called Kabolas Oil Malchus Shemaim. We're accepting upon ourselves the kingdom of Hashem and we're detaching ourselves totally from the kingdom of the other side. The, the rulership, the command of the other side, the Yetzir Hora, the Sitra Achra, of which their Malchus, their kingdom, is a kingdom of Pigam Abris. That's what it's all about. Rabbi Nezal says, that suffices, that's enough, when a person is undergoing the standard type of test in this area of Pigam Abris. In the final moments of his life, Yaakov Avinu wanted to reveal to his sons the future, the most important secrets of the future, when the kingdom of Hashem will be complete, when Moshiach will come. And when he was about to reveal it, the spirit of Hashem left him, and the Gemara says, Yaakov Avinu thought to himself, this must imply that my children are defective in this area. They are not, these 12 children are not plugged into these 12 words. They don't accept Hashem's authority on themselves completely. They don't believe purely in the one Hashem, in Hashem Echot. And the Gemara says that they immediately, all 12 sons cried out immediately, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echot. Just like in your heart, Shema Yisrael. Yisrael was one of the names, that was the name of Yaakov Avinu. And they said, just like in your heart, there is only one Hashem, so too in our hearts. The only authority we accept is Hashem Echot. And Rabbi Nezal tells us that a Jew who will recite the Shema and Baruch Shem Kodem al with Kavona, with this intention that by doing this, I'm attaching myself to the Malchus of Kiddusha, to the Kingdom of Holiness, and I'm severing any connection that I might have forged with the Malchus of the Sitra Achra, with the kingdom, the authority of the other side. We are privileged to have been given this information, this knowledge of the Shema Yisrael, Baruch Shem Koed Malchus Voed, with the tears and the Tikkun Akloli. And we believe, Be'amun Shlema that a Jew who tries, who tries his best <coughs> to pass the tests that, that, that are sent our way, the advice of the, the mikvah that Rabbein Azal gave us, we believe Be'amun Shlema that this will activate the incredible power that was set into motion by Yaakov Avinu and Yosef Tzadik at that time, and this will bring about the complete geula, the final geula for Klal Yisrael. We know the Pesach we say every day, Uvo letzioin goyel, uleshovei fesha biyakoi. The Goyel, the Redeemer, the final Redeemer, Moshiach, will come to Tzion, will come to the Jewish people, to Yerushalayim. And then the Pasuk says afterwards, Va'ani zois brisi, that the coming of the Geula is dependent on this item, Shmira Sabris, Tikkun Abris. We should be zeichen, by following the example set for us by Yaakov Avinu and Yosef Atzadik, to, to receive, to draw on their strength, and to overcome this test, and thereby overcome, pass all the other tests, and be zerichah to the final ruler with the coming of Moshiach, the rebuilding of the base of Mikdash, B'nei Rebbeinu, B'nei Rebbeinu.